So let's talk about circular motion and let us consider an object that moves in a circle like so. All right. And let's say he's trying to move from one point here, A, to another point B. Now, what we're going to talk about here is the ways to describe this motion. And of course, the most obvious way that this happens is this distance over here. All right. The physical distance traveled between two points on a circular path, we typically call the arc length, denoted by the symbol S. There is, however, another way to look at this, right? And if we think about this as the center of the circle, okay, then of course we have a couple of radii over here, R, R. We can also think of the movement from A to B as an angular displacement, which we will call theta. And it turns out that the relationship between S and theta, S is simply a scaling of the angular displacement theta by the radius. S equals to R theta. And this has a lot of implications, of course. This means, of course, if you think about it, that for an object, or for two objects, let's say, moving the same angular displacement theta, like so, depending on your radius, R1, you'll notice that you'll travel a certain S1. But if you travel on the same, or rather the same angular displacement, but with a larger circle, R2, then your arc length, S2, will be larger. And hence, larger radius, given the same angular displacement, means you have a larger arc length. This is, of course, something that we observe when we see runners running around the track in the 400-meter race. You'll notice that the guy who starts on the inner lane is somewhere behind. And as you move out to the outer lanes, the guys seem to start a little bit further. And that's to compensate for their larger arc lengths. So, remember, okay, if we start with S equals to R theta, that there is something called linear velocity, which is defined as the rate of change of your displacement. And so we have V. And similarly, we have something called an angular velocity, omega. And it turns out, unsurprisingly, that these things are also related by the radius. So, let's talk about angular velocity. First of all, okay, let us be very clear that theta should always be measured in radians, okay, if you want to use this formula accurately. And therefore, angular velocity is simply the radians per second. How many radians can you travel per second? And so, for example, if I say your angular velocity is equal to pi radians per second, then basically in one second, you'll travel uh, angular displacement of pi, which is half a circle. One second to do that, another second to do that. And so, again, unsurprisingly, right, if you travel on a circle with a larger radius, then you have to have a larger tangential velocity. And so let's consider that. Let's say we have a circle like this. Okay, so if you do this angular displacement 2 pi in a certain amount of time, then you would have to travel this entire distance in that time. But if you were traveling on a larger circle, then of course you see that the total distance that you travel in the same amount of time will be larger. And so at this point of time, make sure you understand what is angular displacement and what is angular velocity. Both are this is measured in radians, this is measured in radians per second, and they are both related to their tangential quantities via a scaling of the radius.